You can say, hey, I want to build an audience of people that watch 45 seconds of my one minute video. Now, to me as an advertiser, 45 seconds is an eternity, right? If I can get somebody to engage with my video, watch that video for 45 seconds, I know that I've at least piqued their interest. And what I'm going to do is with that audience, I'm going to create a separate campaign where I have a different video, which actually talks about a solution to the problem that I addressed in the first video. So in video one, I just talked about the problem. All I did was get attention. Video two, I introduced a solution to the problem. And I'm only advertising to people that have spent 45 seconds or more on my first video. That is how you effectively use Facebook these days. You don't do a solution-based video to a wide audience and expect to make money. You're going to lose a lot of money in that case. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show. Chuck Anderson here. And uh, I have with me another amazing guest. And if you are uh, right now looking for ways to advertise your business in the most effective way possible, and in particular using video to do that, both of those things are going to be uh, well discussed today. Uh, I have the pleasure of interviewing uh, Bob Regneris with me today. And uh, Bob is the co-founder of Feed Stories, which is a digital marketing uh, uh, agency. He's a digital marketing expert. He's the author of five books, including the fourth edition of The Ultimate Guide to Facebook Advertising. I know people are going to have questions about this, Bob. Yeah, and, I bet. Uh, and, and, and so you're also a very sought after expert in the area of Facebook advertising and in particular, deep funnel video marketing, which I know yep. when you and I had our previous conversation, we talked a lot about video and video marketing, and it is so powerful. So, Bob, thank you for being here today. Hey, it's a pleasure, Chuck. Always great to talk with you. Awesome. Well, yeah, I know we've been looking forward to doing this for a while, so here we are. So, look, you know, I think a great place to start, Bob, is what the heck is deep funnel video <laughs> marketing. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's interesting. Um, you know, I've been I've been in digital advertising over 20 years and always on the paid side. I never really dipped my toe in the SEO waters. And uh 2012, 2013, I got into Facebook advertising. I, I got in early. Uh, like some people are getting into TikTok now. Like before Facebook was so like well known and advertisers were doing so like I was in just before the wave. And it was interesting, about three years after I started it, I got invited to Facebook headquarters down in Austin. And there was about 100 advertisers in the room. And I thought I was going to go there and meet some people and learn more about the Facebook ad platform and some inside stuff. And the strangest thing happened is that 25% of what they talked about was about video. In fact, one of the presentations, the vice president of the Facebook newsfeed said, we are a video company now. You are going to see us change our platform to emphasize video, to give priority to video. You're going to see better performance from, from video ads. And I was like, whoa, did not expect that. Not really a video guy back in 2016. I actually left the meeting at lunch, went down to the parking lot, called my now business partner, Brandon, and said, hey, dude, um, he's a copywriter and a graphics person. And he was dabbling in video. I said, you aren't going to believe what I just heard. Facebook is becoming a video company. We need to start emphasizing video. And here, you know, here we are six years later, uh, six years into a video company. But the strangest thing was a conversation I had offline with one of the head engineers. And he told me, he's like, hey, you know, the Facebook ad platform, we could bid better than you, we can target better than you. But the one thing we can't do better than you is creative. So focus all your attention on creative. And for me, that was like a slam dunk. So when we work with any client, we are focusing on the creative and creative is the piece that gets your customers to take action. So no matter what platform comes around, I just happen to be a Facebook expert. But if you're advertising on TikTok and YouTube and things like that, it's all about the creative. And that's really good news for us because although AI is exciting, like if you are a creative person, that's how you're going to get 
your prospects to convert into customers. You know, and anyone who's done any sort of Facebook advertising in the past, you know, you get mixed messages out there. A lot of people talking about the AI. Some people will say, oh, it's it's about the creative, which uh, mm -hmm. I get that's what you're talking about. Others are, oh, well, it's all about the audience targeting and you need to have all these you know, layers right. to your audiences. And then others saying, no, you don't have to have any audience targeting at all. Just let the AI do it. And so it's interesting right. to hear you say that and that what you have found is that it's all about the creative. So what, why, yeah. what you know, let's expand on that a little bit. So why, why should our listeners go all in on creative as the, the number one thing, as opposed to some of these other things, such as the AI right. and, and the audience targeting. Yeah. And, and I didn't mean to like skim over your first question. You, you asked about deep funnel uh -huh. and deep funnel is essentially, and, and it's, it's going to tie back to the second question. Deep funnel yeah. is essentially a principle I learned from Eugene Schwartz. Uh, he wrote a book back in 1966 called Breakthrough Advertising, and it's about understanding your level of customer awareness. So this is where creative really matches, like, how do I become successful on this particular paid platform using video? Well, I use video because I think it's it's the absolute number one way to communicate in this world, um, in this digital age. But here's the thing. When somebody says that their Facebook ads or their YouTube ads aren't working, the number one thing that I see, Chuck, is that they are not advertising to the level of their customer awareness. For instance, mm -hmm. in deep funnel advertising, I talk about something being solution aware, meaning, Chuck, you are actively searching for a, uh, a solution to a problem that you have. Here's the problem. You may be searching for a solution, but 80% of the people aren't. And so if you are taking approach of advertising a solution to a mass audience, you're missing out on a wide range of people that could potentially be your customers. So we talk about how do I advertise to people when they're aware? Well, when somebody is not aware of a particular problem or they're not paying attention to it, that means our job is to call attention to that problem, not shove a solution down their throats. And that's where so many advertisers, Chuck, are wasting money by doing solution-based advertising when what they should be doing is at the beginning of the funnel or top of the funnel, get attention, call out the problem, all right? Let people know like you are there and you have this particular problem. Then and only then can we talk about a solution. And so, yeah, we use things like retargeting, email marketing to then talk about solutions. But this is, this is the number one thing that I see is that they are putting out video ads that are targeting a solution before they even discussed a problem with their prospect. You know, that's a really interesting point because, and I know I'm guilty of coaching people this way as well. And uh, it, it, it's very common to recommend, oh, you, you, know, you got to position yourself as being a solution to a problem. Mm -hmm. And yes, you do. But what you're saying is don't make that your main advertising message because that's going to resonate with that part of that audience that's ready for that thing right now but what about everyone else and so that's really interesting. and you know that's great like if you're on a platform where the media is cheap you can afford to do solution-based advertising but if anybody's advertised on facebook in the last year like they know what's going on it is damn expensive to advertise so we really got to be smart about things. So let's build an audience of people that are interested. This is what's amazing about video is that, you know, in this world of iOS, when tracking is an issue and things like that, Facebook still allows you to do things with video. That's pretty cool. Number one is, let's say you create a one minute video and it is basically addressing a particular problem in the marketplace. What you can do, Chuck, is you can make an audience of people. And I don't care if they're on an iPhone, an Android, whatever. You can say, hey, I want to build an audience of people that watch 45 seconds of my one-minute video. Now, to me as an advertiser, 45 seconds is an eternity, right? If I can get somebody to engage with my video, watch that video for 45 seconds, I know that I've at least piqued their interest. And what I'm going to do is, 
with that audience, I'm going to create a separate campaign where I have a different video, which actually talks about a solution to the problem that I addressed in the first video. So in video one, I just talked about the problem. All I did was get attention. Video two, I introduced a solution to the problem. And I'm only advertising to people that have spent 45 seconds or more on my first video. That is how you effectively use Facebook these days. You don't do a solution-based video to a wide audience and expect to make money. You're going to lose a lot of money in that case. Exactly right. And well, and if you take that solution-based video and target a solution-aware audience, that audience is going to be very small. And guess what? All your competitors are going to be doing that uh, as well. So that's probably, you know, the, the volume isn't there and the cost is much, much higher. So I love what you're saying about this. Um, and I know with conversations that I've had with people back when I had my Facebook ad agency is they're concerned about a couple of things. One is that they want to go as direct to customer as possible. I mean, it's always about the budget, right? And so yeah. how can I get the biggest return for the smallest budget as possible? And then also, you know, resistance to video initially as the creative. And I think, What's going on there is just that text and image are so much easier to create than video. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that. So, so, you know, why, you know, do, should people start with video? And if so, what kind of video should they, um, you know, start with? And uh, yeah, what do you recommend there? So I, I do not disagree with you in terms of the like, hey, it is way easier to do text and images um that that's certainly a way to go um i think that there's a time then when you when you test and you test cheaply and you test quickly like that's one of my it's just it's just part of something that i've always done as a, as a marketer like i want to if i want to test an idea i'm not going to go deep into development of creative i'm going to just test something now if i see a pulse then i'm going to really spend time on doing a deep dive in the creative in my experience, having video generally out, outperforms an ad, which is text and images. It especially outperforms when you use like archival footage, right? The type of stuff where you see like, oh, I want to target a business owner. And then you see an archival footage that you pull down from Adobe and it's a business person in an office. Like it just screams ad. So the very, just the number one thing that I would tell anybody is don't be boring. And if you could have a really good hook at the beginning of your video, like if the first five to seven seconds are, are basically your headline and you could like just get them to stop the scroll, you're going to have a really effective video. Now you could do professionally produced video like we do at Feed Stories, but we do a lot of stuff, Chuck, where it's just like somebody's phone held up um, because what you're doing is you're matching the media. Like when you're scrolling through on Instagram or watching YouTube videos, it's not a ton of professionally done polished video, right? It's more at home phone based type stuff. So the more you can match the media to look like what your prospect is used to seeing, and then you do a really good job of nailing them at the beginning of the video. And then especially like the first three lines, if you're on Facebook at your Facebook ad, you know, you're going to have a really good uh, you're going to have a really good response right there. So I have just found, Chuck, that video will generally outperform in the long run than a text-based image ad. Now, across the board, you're going to find instances where it doesn't. But again, in general, and again, we, we work with a lot of e-com, SaaS, thought leaders, like that's where video becomes something that becomes an asset and something that helps outperform other ads. Mm -hmm. Well, and I know this is part of what you do is that you help coming up with that video creative. And mm -hmm. uh, if anybody is already convinced and went and checked it out, the links to Bob's uh, website and everything that you do is already beneath this video and in the show notes of this episode. But I wanted to ask you um, with video, so video over other types of creative, where should someone start with that process of creating video for their for their ads? I, I would suggest going cheap. I mean, most of us are carrying around the most powerful video camera ever <laughs> created in our pockets. 
Um, I, I would start with that. Um, don't, don't try to overthink it. I, I think the one fallacy that people have is that they don't have it within themselves to like talk to their marketplace. And I think that's one thing that uh, Brandon, my business partner, I try to overcome with clients, which is like everything you need to say to sell your product or service to the marketplace is locked up inside of your head. And you have to kind of get past that. Um, a lot of people don't like to hear themselves in video, see themselves on video. You're going to have to get past that. We believe that this day and age, when trust is at an all-time low, the, the little things that you can do to increase trust is going to go a long way with your market. So uh, a video with somebody holding their phone up, even with like a selfie stick, is going to be authentic, right? And it's the owner on camera talking about the solution, talking about the answers to people's problems. The authenticity is is the thing that we really have to fight for these days. Again, we don't trust a lot of people. We don't trust our politicians. We don't trust our leaders. And that, of course, is going to fall on us too. People don't trust their businesses, right? So we have to develop that link. And it's it's really hard to develop trust with an image and just text. Like if we can get our eyes locking eyes with our prospects and we could be authentic and talk about how we serve, what we offer, the problems that we help people overcome. Um, if we can tell stories of transformation in our clients, like this is how we're going to build a business in the 21st century. We've got to overcome a lot of things. Video helps us. It's kind of like this catalyst, right? It amplifies things. So if you have a really powerful message, video is going to amplify that, right? It's going to amplify whatever you have. So if we can do that in a very authentic way, picking up your phone and creating your first video is the absolute best way to start. That is, that's amazing. I mean, just start with what you've got. I mean, you can get yeah. fancy later, but, yeah. uh, but just connect. I think that's the key word. What that you said is like connect with your target audience. And, uh, and, and you said it earlier as well. I mean, these, some of these videos that just smell like an ad right yeah. away and people are yeah. turning them off. Right. And I know I do. Well, as a marketer, sometimes I don't turn them off because I want to see what the heck they're doing. But <laughs> right. You're doing, you're consumer, doing research. I'm not right? buying. <laughs> right. If you just put your consumer head on. Right. I mean, look, we we're past the days of like, we've heard this before. Oh, your customer is Homer Simpson. Well, no, I mean, our customers now are sophisticated, right? They're used to a Facebook and Instagram feed, right? They're used to like seeing ads interrupt uh, their YouTube experience. Like we have a lot to overcome as advertisers and we can't just assume that, hey, it's just a dumb audience. No, like they're sophisticated. They know authenticity. They can smell distrust. Like we, we have... It's not about like, what tricks can I do to overcome that? It's like, can I just be my authentic self? Can I authentically represent my business and tell the story of how I help people overcome the problem, enrich their life, things like that? That to me, that's that's the way to do it um, as an advertiser here in 2022 and 2023. Yeah, makes sense. So, so video. Now you can run video on Facebook. You can run video on YouTube. And uh, sometimes business owners don't have the budget to do both really, really well. And they sometimes spread their mm. budget around. Uh, do you recommend that? Or do you recommend that if they have a smaller budget that they pick one over the other? Uh, definitely. Uh, I'm in the camp of choose one and go deeper with that. Um, you can't do anything well if it's just shallow. I mean, you can't swim in a shallow pool. You can splash around a little bit, have fun, but you really can't make any progress until you get to the deep end. Um, mm -hmm. I I believe I, I would have normally recommended, oh, you like start on Facebook. Or like, I think now you have to really understand where your market is. For some people, it may be your market is absolutely on TikTok or your market is absolutely on Instagram. You know, like you really have to understand where your customers are, the media that they're using, and then and then match that media to that pl particular platform. So I, I absolutely suggest to people on small budgets, pick a platform that you understand where you know that your customers are, get good at that before you move to the next platform.
That's probably the best answer to that question that I've ever heard from a Facebook ads guy. Right. Thank and, you. Right. Cause <laughs> almost everyone has their favorite, like, Oh, yeah. Facebook slash Instagram or, Oh no, you need to go YouTube. And usually they have some vested interest, like they're, you right. know, they're some recommending YouTube because they're a YouTube ad guy. Right. But what you said was go where your customers are and go with the platform that you understand the best. So let me blow your mind, Chuck. Uh, we've got a we're working with a client now who's a local business, right? He's in the home construction business. We have a strategy with him where he's sending out postcards with a QR code that drive him to a landing page to capture an email address. Like old school through and through. The only new school we thing we added was the video on the landing page where we do case studies. Like it's so simple, right? Like, oh no, we're gonna do it, we're gonna run Facebook ads, or we're gonna do a LinkedIn up. No, like you, you want to reach people in this particular zip code, we're going to send a postcard out. We're going to put a QR code, which everybody learned how to use during the pandemic. We're going to draw into a page where there's going to be a video case study and they're going to sign up to be in a call with you. Like the, the fact that that works is because nobody's doing the very simple things. Like this is absolutely transforming his business because nobody, everyone else is trying to play with technology and he just applied technology in a really smart way using some old school marketing methods. Love it. I'm a huge fan of that kind of stuff. And I like to kind of hack and mix old school and new school as yeah. well. So that I love that idea. I mean, you just never, when you go to the conferences and you have conversations with other media guys and ad guys, you never hear about that kind of stuff, right? I love that. No, and maybe maybe it's my age a little bit, but like for me, it's like, what what works, you know? Uh, but I, we, we have clients that have TikTok channels that are blowing up, like that's fantastic, right? That's your media. But like, let's just find something that absolutely works and go deep with it. You know, that that's the way to go. So if it works, I'm a fan. Well, that makes too much sense, Bob. Like we don't blow <laughs> people's minds too much. <laughs> no, no, we shouldn't be sensible. We should be we sh we should be touting the, the latest hack, right? The latest super secret thing. Uh, I just I'm past that. Yeah. Well, and, you know, to anyone listening in who's maybe struggled with this, they've run ads in the past and it didn't really work out. Uh, they've tried video, the video didn't land, they're confused about audience targeting and uh, creative, uh, you know, creating the video, all of that, then, you know, I think that there's really nobody better that they can collaborate with than you. And, you know, speaking of collaboration, we're all about partnership and collaboration. You know, this, yeah. is, this is the theme of our show. And so, so I highly recommend that people are looking for someone to partner with, someone to collaborate with or to hire or to work with. And you're definitely one of those people. But but beyond that, none of us really gets anywhere on our own, really. Sometimes we're in denial about it. But I wanted to ask you about, you know, how partnerships and collaborations have, you know, for switching gears a little bit here, uh, how partnerships and collaborations have played a role in your journey and the growth of your business. Yeah, from 1998 to 2004, I was kind of a solo uh, marketer. I, I was learning on my own, trying to do things on my own. 2004, I went to a conference, Dan Kennedy conference, and Bill Glazer offered uh, an opportunity to join his mastermind. And I, and I took that chance. It was a very expensive, risky chance. But I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I stretched myself because the partnerships and the collaborations from that group absolutely took my career from, you know, like down here and it like hockey stick, right? Um, I got, I started writing books. I started speaking. Um, I grew an agency to a, a, an amazing, like I could have never imagined it. Um, I've always, uh, since then I've, I've done partnerships. I'm involved in a number of businesses where it's multiple partners. Um, I love the idea of, of going at something and combining skill sets. Now, my partners and I are not like alike, um, but we have we share the same values. 
Um, so like we have different skill sets, different personalities, but we like, we, we all are pulling on the rope the same. So I really like collaborations, uh, in mastermind groups. And I love doing business partnerships with people where there's a shared value, but there's a diverse set of skills and personalities. Cause I think it helps make the business more dynamic and more relatable. You know, speaking all of all of that, you mentioned a couple of my marketing heroes, Dan Kennedy, Bill Glazer, and you're absolutely right. They're not shy about pricing their stuff for sure. So I I get it when you say it's risky. (laughs) And I think that's one of the things that hold people back from masterminds that hold people back from collaborations and partnerships is they worry about uh, being able to afford it. First of all, if there's, 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 there's a cash component, but also being able to, uh, you know, everyone's looking at their own pocket first and everyone else or, or, yeah. you know, and there's so such a bigger picture there. So, I mean, what, what would your advice be to someone who's maybe going out there alone? We have a lot of solopreneurs in our group yeah. that want to get to the next level. And we always say it's like, you're not going to get to the next level until you stop doing everything yourself. That was part of my journey. I was a chronic do-it-yourselfer. Yeah. So. Well, not to get metaphysical, but I have to a little bit. I, I believe in abundance. Mm. Um, I believe that the universe works in your favor when you show initiative. Um, like resources flow to you when when you take a chance on yourself. So I I would always recommend to somebody that, look, if you want to take the next step in your career to grow your business to the next, next level, you've got to do something tangible to signal to yourself, to signal to others, to the universe, whatever, that I'm in this for reals, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm in this to, to do it right. And so, you know, when I invested that $12,000 in my first mastermind group, it was a huge stretch for me, Chuck. But the return on that, right? First of all, just in terms of, of revenue was, was, was like 10x, all right, with, within months, okay? That's, that's just one thing. But what I learned was just the, the relationships I made, like you can't put a price tag on that. First of all, the friendships, the opportunities, and just the like pulling me up, right? Like I joined a mastermind, not where I was the top dog. I was actually kind of the bottom of the ladder, but they accepted me and it pulled me up to their level. And I, and I got there because like I trusted in myself. So you're not going to grow as a professional if you stay rooted where you are. If you don't get out and take chances, you don't make investments of your time, your resources, right? If you don't have a lot of money, then you need to invest your time, right? You need to invest something because you can't invest anything and expect a return, right? If you just put your money into the savings account, um, it's not going to grow. You need to take risk. So that's that's my advice. Like if you want to get where you want to be, you have to invest something. And if you don't have a lot of money, you invest your time. If you don't have a lot of time, invest your money. That's that's how you're gonna grow. I got chills, Bob, because I'm really glad you went there. It's something I believe also. And we our listeners know I say this all the time. If you want to grow your business, you have to grow yourself. Mm. And and sometimes that is growing ourselves as being a risk taker. Uh, showing the universe and the world that we're serious about about that. When we take that one step, it's amazing how there's this other world that kind of opens up that we it was already there. We didn't even realize was yeah. already there. And so I really love that. Um, you know, and so much of this journey is about growing ourselves. And one of the I have been blessed with a lot of great mentors, a lot of great teachers in my career. You mentioned two of them, right. Dan Kennedy and Bill Glazer. Uh, who do you learn from and who do you recommend? I mean, you've already mentioned that might, we might have already answered the question, but who do you recommend that others learn from as well? Well, I definitely started there. Um, I had the opportunity to, to get close to, to Bill and Dan. Um, you know, Bill's Bill's not in great health these days. He's not very active. Um, but I become 
uh, I've become close to Perry Marshall. He's a friend of mine, but I also consider him a mentor. Um, another one is Brian Kurtz. Uh, in fact, just uh, last week, I was in New York at his mastermind. Um, so B- Brian Kurtz is another one that I that I just generally gen- genuinely adore um, because he's got experience and he's just a very genuine human being. So um, those those four. Off the top of my head, there's countless others who have, you know, played different roles. But those are the four that I really kind of put on a pedestal uh, just because of their uh, uniqueness. They're 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 just genuine OG type people that um, are, are, are good individuals to follow. Yeah, though, though there, you've mentioned some decent human beings there and, you know, so many people who've grown their business, I think, would share those same names and, and that yeah. they were instrumental in their growth as well. So, yeah. yeah, all really good recommendations. So books, obviously, uh, lots of great books, um, great information packed in them. I was never a really great reader, but I discovered Audible a few years ago. And mm. since then, have all the books I wanted to read and that were on my bookshelf, um, I have finally consumed because of Audible. And so probably 60 plus books in the last couple of years. Uh, I know I've got my favorites. Who, what is your must read book that everyone should either have on their bookshelf or or be uh, consuming on a regular basis. So there's there's two business books that I'll recommend. The first is um, Breakthrough Advertising. I, I mentioned it already. Eugene mm-hmm. Schwartz. Um, it is a foundational, like it's it's source material for marketers, um, and it's a very difficult book. It's also a very expensive book. Um, Brian Kurtz actually. Um, has the rights to the book and and sells the book. So if you look for breakthrough advertising, you can find it. Brian Kurtz actually sells that on behalf of Eugene's widow. Um, but it is a foundational marketing book. Um, the other marketing book, I'm going to recommend Perry's book, 80, 80, 20 sales and marketing. Um, if you understand the 80, 20 Pareto principle and, and take a look at how Perry applies that to business. It's going to transform the way you think, the way you strategize, the way you go about your day. Um, Those are two business books. Um, I I also do a lot of um, personal development. Um, I'm reading uh, a book series by Neil Donald Walsh called Conversations with God. Um, I am a a more spiritual person now these days, um, and I'm just finding that to be something that's touching me right now. and so I do a lot of like business reading and personal reading uh, at the same time. I like having multiple books. I don't read one at a time. I read multiple books at a time is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And a, a lot of entrepreneurs do that. I find myself going from one to the other as well. It really yeah. depends on what I'm looking for and what I'm feeling that day. But uh, usually something on the more spiritual side, sometimes other things on the more tactical side. Yeah. And you've mentioned both here. We've got advertising from a fundamental point of view, uh, also putting that into practice, but also, but then growing ourselves. And, you know, yeah. what, what, you know, what, what, what are we really contributing here with, with all of this building our business and what's the legacy and all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah. so all good things to think about. So uh, those are great recommendations. Thank you so much. And, Thank you for asking. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's something that you know, you know. What one day we're going to take all of these clips from all of their past episodes, and we're going to create a little. Uh, here's here's everyone's go to book recommendation. So, <laughs> we yeah. got some good <laughs> some good sound bites in there from. Yeah, you, you probably got a good list uh, after all the interviews you've done. I bet. You know what's amazing is that. Uh, so many of them have a different book to recommend. I mean, we've heard the Think and Grow Rich a couple of times yeah. and 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 those ones, but it's amazing how little repetition there has actually been. Um, and so uh, really, really cool. I love that's asking very, that question. A, that's and a very always, interesting result. It's, it's becoming a social experiment now. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah. So, and of course, yeah, we've all read Think and Grow Rich and it'd be on your list of like, okay, if you're into a top 25, it'd be on there. But 
you know, I think I think it's when you ask somebody like to name one book, you know, you know you're going to get a pretty diverse list. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, it was definitely unplanned and unexpected, but really, really super cool. What's happening with that? Love it. And uh, no different today, Bob. So thank you <laughs> so much. Uh, look, if I know for sure that this topic of of Facebook ads and video, which you are definitely a you know foremost expert on. Um, I know this is something that people struggle with. Yeah. And uh, if they were to, if this has resonated with them and they want to, you know, um, take the next step, I know you've got some free resources as well. Uh, what would you recommend is the next step in reaching out to you? And we'll make sure all the links are uh, sure. beneath the video and in the, in the show notes here. Well, thank you for the opportunity first uh, to be interviewed and just share this with your audience. I love, uh, I love coaching at heart. Um, what I didn't mention, Chuck, is that I'm a high school basketball coach. So like in, in a couple of weeks, we started our season. I've done, I've been coaching since I was 16 years old. So like, I'm just going to coach no matter, like if my court is my office or the hardwood, whatever, uh, I just love helping people. That's just kind of who I am. So um, thanks for the opportunity for that. Um, feedstories.com. Uh, if you want to learn things about video, uh, we also have we have free uh, Facebook training. I have a whole Facebook masterclass on there. Um, and what we're really excited about, uh, we developed a new resource called the Ultimate uh, Video Guide. So if you go to ultimatevideoguide.com, I know you have a, a link there. Uh, we, we have a amazing resource book that basically goes through the three stages of getting video done. You know, what do I say? How do I get it done? And what do I do with it when I'm done? And we're really proud to share that. It's completely free. And uh, we're getting just amazing feedback. We, we published it about three weeks ago. And uh, people are absolutely uh, raving about it. So we're really proud to put that out there. And it's helping uh, shape a lot of people's uh, ideas and strategies around video. So we'd love people to get those resources in their hands. Well, and to our audience, if uh, anything Bob has said today resonates with you and you want to learn more and you want to take the next step, I highly recommend that you go and download that. The link is there in the show notes. If you're listening on podcast, on video, it's just beneath this video. Just give it a click. Go get it. It's free, right? So yes. uh, you might learn something. <laughs> you will learn something. There we go. Right? So what have you have to lose? Go ahead and do that. Um, Bob, thank you so much for, I think, your generosity uh, with your information, the way you've answered the questions and just being uh, just being an all around great guy. So I uh, really appreciate that. Um, if you were to leave our audience here with just one final word of wisdom or piece of advice, what would you tell them? Bet on yourself. You have it within you to do it. Um, if you're struggling, um, Success is right around the corner. Believe in yourself, bet on yourself. You can make it happen. Amazing. Thank you so much. Those are great words to end this episode by. And uh, Bob, thank you. And to our audience, go take action. This is, you know, bet on yourself. Bet on yourself. What could action could you take today that would make all the difference? And maybe it's to reach out to Bob and to find out more about how Facebook ads and video can help you in your business, could be to download his free resource, could be anything. But whatever it is, keep moving forward, never give up on the pursuit of your dreams, and uh, make sure you uh, meet us back here for the next amazing episode and the next amazing guest. But thank you to our community. Thank you, Bob. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.